Oh, hey, I bet you didn't think I was alive because I look like a puppet. I bet there are a lot of things you have only thought about one way. Well, just let me say I'm glad you stumbled onto my Wonderland world because I'm about to show you a lot of things that you have come across in your life that you're going to have to think about differently. Just a quick tip before we start. See the numbered buttons on the bottom of the screen? Well, the numbers represent how much you agree with what you see. After you press it, you will then move to the next adventure. See you then. Mmm, chocolate. Mmm, peanut butter. Ooh. Hey, you got chocolate on my peanut butter. You got peanut butter on my chocolate. Oh, good. It's really good. Yeah, I love this. Two great tastes that taste great together. Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Real milk chocolate. Good old-fashioned peanut butter. Peanut If you please, yo, everyone loves them from animatronics from outer space. Can't get enough of them, I'll empty a bag right into my face. You get them at movies, get them in the combo meal to save. There's a represent a rainbow, might melt in your hand if you dare to wait. It comes in a cup or a chocolate bar varieties. Comes in three colors, the three you see in autumn leaves. They're kind of spooky, synonymous with Halloween. They are the dookie, you'll find a sack inside the three pieces at the movies. Reese's pieces from a party, will it Reese's in the treehouse? Will it I'm so far, you can't decode it, and you know it. Peanut butter, it's so wonder. Reese's pieces got me wheezing, free me from the spell I'm under. Reese's pieces at the movies, Reese's pieces from a party. Will it Reese's in the tree? I'm yeah. the Reese's. I'm so far, you can't yeah. decode it, and you know it. Peanut butter, it's so wonder. Reese's pieces got me wheezing, free me from the spell I'm under. Reese's pieces. We're Chicago in the year of 1893. A man named Milton, a disaster out of Lancaster, P. Inspired by the Germans and the chocolate making machinery. He invented milk chocolate, or throw from the Swiss, that's history. So milk with a factory, and a town and a park, and a school for orphans. Made bars and kids and chips real cheap, so poor peace could afford them. What a great depression. Night 20, not putting no money in a pocket. To Pennsylvania, where well, milk and cat don't crack our chocolate. There would be a good bar in the middle of World War, and milk and did his part. Made anti-aircraft guns and sent the soldiers chocolate bars. Meanwhile, they had a shipping, was secretly dipping peanut butter. And it's Pennsylvania basement, it was so exciting, keep the lightning and thunder. Name's Harry Burnett. You can bet my ass didn't go to Harvard Behold a penny cup Could've done it without George Washington Carver I was living the high life Champagne limousine, it was a trip Then I died of a heart attack Off and off, I was bought in 56 Now please fast forward To the 70s, scientists discovered Paduce Peanut butter's too oily The pieces take their part in a food chain Now the name is commonplace It's the latest interview with the lady named Witherspoon Don't eat a whole bag here Cause mama be mad and dad said gonna sue Reese's at the movies, Reese's Pieces Slumber party, will it Reese's In the treehouse, will it Reese's Not the party, candy cola and you Go and get your Reese's right now so you can be the coolest among your friends. So what, you think now that you heard this catchy little mm -hmm. jingle, you have to go out and buy some candy? I mean, think about it. The colors, the lyrics, the tone, the music, all of it. Yeah. Don't you think it was just a little bit manipulative? I mean, this is... 15 minutes ago, were you even thinking about going out and buying this candy at all? Sorry. I'm... I know it's not your fault, I probably shouldn't be blaming you. Did you know that corporations and companies are spending millions of dollars every minute to pump messages and things into your TV and radio and iPod to try to get you to buy their product? Here, watch this video, it'll do a better job of explaining it than I can.
The media is the message and the messenger, and increasingly a powerful one. People learn more from media than any other single source of information. So if we want to understand what's going on in our society in the 21st century, we have to understand media. If you think about media and technology, they're delivering content that is shaping our society. They're shaping our politics, they're shaping our national discourse, and most of all, they're shaping our children's brains and lives and emotions. We estimate that there's somewhere north of a billion people who use the internet every single day. That's just a reach that hasn't existed before in terms of media. Our kids today live on Facebook and cell phones. The diversity of the platforms means that those images are impacting your kid 24-7. And whatever restrictions existed when we were growing up simply don't exist today. Girls get the message from very early on that what's most important is how they look, that their value, their worth depends on that. And boys get the message that this is what's important about girls. We get it from advertising, we get it from films, we get it from television shows, video games, everywhere we look. So no matter what else a woman does, no matter what else her achievements, their value still depends on how they look. There is no appreciation for women intellectuals. <laughs> it's all about the body, not about the brain. You all saw the famous uh, photo from the weekend of Hillary looking so haggard and what, looking like 92 years old. Breast implants, did you have them or not? Because that's all over the internet about you in mainstream media. I think if you waterboarded Nancy Pelosi, she wouldn't admit to plastic surgery. The fact that media are so limiting and so derogatory to the most powerful women in the country, then what does it say about media's ability to take any woman in America seriously? You get a woman in the Oval Office, most powerful person in the world, what's the downside? You mean besides the PMS and the mode swings? The media treats women like and it's horrible, and it's like, I don't know how we survive it. I don't know how we rise above it. Media creates consciousness, and if what gets put out there that creates our consciousness is determined by men, we're not going to make any progress. An aspect of media literacy education that I think many people aren't aware of is the whole political economy of the media. Most media get their revenues from advertising. This is all about capitalism. The exploitation of women's bodies, cells, products, magazines, etc. This notion that these media companies are just giving us what the public wants. No. They're giving us what the media companies want, they're giving us what the advertisers want, and they're packaging it in such a way as to make it sound like it's our fault, and it's not. A lot of advertising is based on making people feel anxious and feeling insecure. The effect is primarily subconscious. It is very harmful, but for the most part, we're not really aware of that. As a culture, women are brought up to just be fundamentally insecure. I remember fifth grade, I was worrying about my weight, and now I'm in ninth grade, I'm still worrying about my weight. I have like close friends that like, in between uh, like break periods, they will go to the bathroom and put on like 10 pounds of makeup, you know, and you're at school to learn. In a world of a million channels, people try to do more shocking and shocking things to break through the clutter. They resort to violent images or sexually offensive images or demeaning images. It creates a climate in which there's widespread and increasing violence against women. When is it going to be enough? We're socializing boys to believe that being a man means being powerful and in control. Ooh, la, la. Being smarter than women or better than women or our needs get met first in relationships with women, that's not genetically predestined. That's learned behavior. I definitely am not one to conform to the we need to be hyper-masculine and we need to be misogynistic stereotypes. Um, I'm, and it really puts a lot of pressure on me when I have relatives who have grown up with this phenomenon who attempt to put me on that path, but I'm not ready for it. Little boys and little girls, when they're seven years old, an equal number want to be president of the United States when they grow up. But then you ask the same question when they're 15, and you see this massive gap emerging.
we're shortchanging voices that are urgently needed in public forums from ever getting to the table. If people knew that Cuba, China, Iraq, and Afghanistan have more women in government than the United States of America, that would get some people upset. No wonder we are in such trouble in this country. We've been choosing our national leadership from 6% of the country. As the most powerful country in the world, if you're not standing for the right values and for the right principles, that's a loss for the world. You can't be what you can't see. Growing up, there was nobody who looked like me on television. So I never dreamed that I could be on television. To see women, to see women leadership in reality and on the screen and in television is huge for women, huge. I got cast in A League of Their Own, and I had 13 or 15-year-old girls coming up to me. They like, oh my god, you have no idea that movie changed my life. I play sports because of that movie. And it really struck me how few opportunities we give women to have that kind of experience watching a movie.